Breaking news, a 12-year-old girl is stabbed, leading to a big police search in Waukesha. There is a very active scene where Peyton was found. Police are still investigating. They still have this neighborhood shut down. We have realized now that we have two missing girls. Are these girls injured? Where are these girls? What was the meaning of this? We had just an overwhelming police presence throughout the communities. There were squad cars zooming everywhere. A major search by ground and air. At one point, I heard a helicopter overhead. You never hear a helicopter. We called in additional resources. We had canine officers that were up. We also started to put some stuff out into the media. So here's what we know at this hour. A 12-year-old Waukesha girl is stabbed 19 times. These are the woods where the stabbing actually happened. A massive search for two girls who were with the victim before she got hurt. We have absolutely no idea what's happened to my younger sister. My daughter was supposed to be at a slumber party, and now she's missing. It was one of those kinds of stories where Newsrooms go crazy and everybody starts trying to find an angle. You just wonder what puts a 12-year-old girl in this state of mind. Morgan was a very happy child. She was intensely creative. She was always making up songs and stories. Vanessa did enjoy choir. She did enjoy singing. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my body to me. Anissa was very imaginative. She would always imagine a bigger and better life for her Barbie dolls. Looking back, Anissa was never really invited to a lot of birthday parties or anything. I don't think she really made friends that easy. Morgan did endure a lot of bullying, especially in the sixth grade by the other students. In the last year, she started to become moodier and a little bit more reclusive. She never talked about any of the sadness or any of the bad things. They knew what each other had gone through and they were going to be there for each other. Initially, when we were first on scene, Christy Wire, Anissa's mom, had called me and said that she had found Anissa's cell phone. I looked at her cell phone, checked all of her text messages, and I found basically her goodbye notes. The message said, this is my final wish to those who care. Do not grieve my absence, but remember me for who I was. I love and cherish you and wouldn't do you harm. It then changed my thoughts from abduction to running away. It was about 2.53 in the afternoon. I had gotten a, a message that the Sheriff's Department had located the girls on the site of I-94. They have found those two girls, I'm told, around 12 years old. They were sitting on the side of the freeway. By the time we found them, they had walked about five hours and made it to the north end of our city. And they were transported back to our police department. The detective told us that they were taking them to the police station to ask them some questions. I remember talking on the way um, how, we're, how we were going to punish Morgan for this. I mean, we just had no idea how, how serious it was. When they brought the girls back, Peyton was actually still in surgery, and we did not know if she was going to make it at this point. So we didn't know if this was going to be a homicide investigation or what this was going to turn out to be. They were kind of dirty, covered in some stains. Their demeanor was very calm. They seemed um, kind of meek. It is a scene uh, you rarely see. In fact, I don't know the last time uh, I have seen two 12-year-old girls in separate interrogation rooms, about to uh, describe in excruciating detail what it is that played out in the woods. I could tell that they were, they were somewhat scared. At least Anissa was showing me that emotion. Um, your parents know that you're here talking to me, okay? And um, they're I'm glad they're, they're, they're so glad that you're safe. I did notice she had a blood stain on the front of her shirt, and she was wearing two shirts. And I asked her, are, you know, are you okay? Can you just stand up and kind of stand there? Okay. Just like right 
Morgan seemed like she was very calm, very relaxed. I mean, she's at a police department and she's covered in blood. And this is like a normal day for her. Uh, all right, he's going to help us out. We're going to take some photographs of you right now. Okay. Do you want to just stand it up, maybe? Right. Just stand it like that. Perfect. What is your name again? Morgan. Do you know what happened to Bella? Morgan called Peyton by the name of Bella. She said there was a nickname because there was another girl named Peyton. Dead. I don't know. Um, she wants to take her to the hospital. What? I was just wondering. She was very nonchalant. It didn't seem like it really concerned her too much if she was dead or alive. First thing I needed to do in order to talk to uh, Anissa and find out what happened, I needed to read to her her Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. If you try to give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in court. Apart from the law, it is jarring to see 12-year-olds being interrogated without their parents present. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by the courts. Understanding these rights, you will sit down and talk to me about today. Here in the state of Wisconsin, a child can be interrogated without the presence of their parent or guardian being in the room. At that time, I did not know that. We find that people are more truthful when they don't have their parents present. You do me a favor and initial right there and sign right there. I thought that she really did understand what her rights were and made a knowledgeable decision to waive those rights. I've never gone into an interview so blind as I have in this one. I thought that maybe this was all about a boy. This is a fight about a boy. I still don't know what happened, and I don't know who did what, and I, and I need to know that today. Okay. We didn't know what these girls were going to tell us. What were you trying to do with her when you stabbed her? Kill her. I might as well just say it. We were trying to kill her. So why did you pick Peyton? I didn't pick her. Who picked her? Whoever Anissa was talking about. She made it seem necessary. My thought was, why would she do this? There's this website full of, like, horror stories that answers. One of those called Slenderman. Who the heck is Slenderman? We had to prove ourselves worthy to Slenderman. To think that two 12-year-olds would come up with something like this and plan it out for six months, as soon as I heard, I knew that this was going to be a big deal. Come to me, come to me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.